we have been joined by Edward Tuto, who is the convener of the Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana. Good morning, Edward. Good morning, Jifa. How are you? I'm doing good. Yourself? Good. So it's good to see you. Thank you. And we also have Council Akwesi Boateng Boama, who is a private legal practitioner. Good morning. Good morning, Jifa. Should I just say we have Akwesi Boateng Boama with us? How are you? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine. And yourself? I'm good. Yeah, been How do you feel on you? On you um, it's not bad. It's looking good. Yes. <laughs> we want to change. <laughs> so each and every day we have them back on a mission of change. So it's good. We shouldn't be stuck in one one, one couch. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> now throughout the news review again, if you want us to hear from you, use the hashtag breakfast daily and the WhatsApp line is 0550 Our first story. Parliament drops the new chamber. So I'm reading from citynewsroom.com, and it says here that, um, let me read this story quickly for you. Parliament has put on hold its decision to construct a new chamber following intense pressure from Ghanaians. The board, I'm going to read excerpts from the, the press release. The board has, upon reviewing presentations made to it by well-meaning Ghanaians, accordingly taken the development out of its present agenda coming out of the statement there and it says the development of parliament Surrey enclave and a new chamber block and offices shall however remain an essential and integral part of the future plans of the legislature in a bid to provide a strong accountable responsive and transparent parliament to serve the purpose of parliament so we'll take a look at firstly is it enough that they are dropping it? And that doesn't necessarily even communicate that they are dropping it all the way. Maybe momentarily they will drop it, but long-term wise, we will revisit this conversation in future. Edward, let me hear your response on this and of course what your group had been working on as well. Okay, thank you very much, Jifa. Let me say a good morning to our descending viewers and also my felicitations goes out to members of the Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, it comes as a good news to us that uh, the leadership of parliament has decided to drop the chamber. However, we are not satisfied because okay. from the way they are communicating, it's as if there's a possibility that the issue is going to be revisited in the near future. Now, the fact must be made that we, the Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana, we are totally against this issue of a new chamber. Whether it is now, whether it is in the near future, or in the far future. Mm -hmm. Because the present chamber that we have now, there is absolutely nothing wrong with it. All right? There's absolutely nothing wrong with it that it cannot be modified. There's absolutely no need for us to go and invest about $200 million to put up a new structure. Look, the present parliament of the United States of America, okay, is over 200 uh, years old way back in the 1800s. They have been using it up until now. Generations of legislators have come and gone, and that structure is still there. The British Parliament has been in existence since 19, uh, how, do, uh, how do you call it, uh, for about 700 years now. It is now that they are considering that a structure that is about 700 years old, 700 good years, they are now thinking of how to put up a new structure, and even that, they have projected it that it should start anywhere, somewhere in the next 10 years. Mm -hmm. So why from this whole idea that all of a sudden, Ghanaians have just woken up to the news that Parliament is committing $200 million. We are totally against it. But you see, there are three dimensions to this whole saga. We have the relevance dimension, which has to do with whether it is, it is relevant looking at our, 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 our present circumstance as a nation. The other dimension has to do with the legality of the whole issue. Does it breach any laws? Then the, the third dimension has to do with the ethics and morality of the whole saga. The petition that we have sent to Strach has to do with the legality and the morality of the entire process. Looking at the communication that has ensued when this whole saga broke out, on the 28th of June, where the unveiling ceremony took place in the House of Parliament, the speaker made it emphatic that there has been a competitive tender process where four firms partook in the process and based on the recommendation of Ghana Institute of Engineers and Architects, a consultant was arrived at and that consultant is Ajayi and Associates. Mm -hmm. That is aside. 
Then on the 4th of July, member of parliament for Adakulu, Honorable Kwame Agboja, who happens to be a member of the Entity Tender Committee of Parliament, made it emphatic that the committee is not aware of any procurement process. They are not in the known. Let's put that aside. Now, in the heat of the moment, when there was so much bashing from the public, on Friday, 5th July, mm -hmm. the minority leader and the majority leader on the floor of parliament made it clear that the financials and the procurement process of this whole project is inconclusive. Mm -hmm. In our opinion, there's dichotomy of facts. There's no consistency in the communication so far as the procurement processes are concerned. The speaker is saying a process has gone on and we have arrived at a consultant. Mm -hmm. The leadership is also saying that the process remains inconclusive. Members of the Tender Entity Committee of Parliament are also saying that they are not aware. Mm -hmm. And if indeed the Entity Tender Committee of Parliament is not aware of this procurement process, we are talking about $200 million. Mm -hmm. That is a huge amount. And if you take a look at the uh, Public Procurement Act at 914, it is quite clear. Looking at Section 20, Section 66, and Schedule 1B, the law makes it clear that within the Parliamentary Service of Ghana, the only entity that has the right to oversee any procurement process, be it the procurement of a consultant, be it a, 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 a substantive contractor, not the Parliamentary Service Board, mm -hmm. not any other body, but the Entity Tender Committee of Parliament. So if indeed the committee is not, was not aware and were not involved in the process, mm -hmm. it means the very people who are mandated by the constitution to make the laws are the same people who are breaching it. Okay. And that is why we want Shrach to look mm -hmm. into it and they should establish the fact whether or not the tender entity committee of parliament was allowed to perform its concern mandated duties. Okay. Then another thing that we are asking of Please Shrach wrap up for is that this whole process that had gone on, we have cited a letter from the office of the speaker, inviting the president to the sword cutting ceremony. Ideally, if a design has been unveiled and there's an invitation from uh, 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 an invitation to the president to come and do a sword cutting ceremony, it means a substantive contract might have been signed. Mm -hmm. So the moment you cut the sword, mm -hmm. it means construction is going to start. Mm -hmm. That is the that is the uh, uh, the culture that we know. But the information minister says that the executive well, was not well, it, so we have to take his word. That is why. Him. That is why, as part of our relief to Shraj, mm -hmm. we are asking Shraj that they should investigate and okay. determine whether or not a substantive contract has been signed. Mm -hmm. If it has been signed, which entity was it awarded to? At what cost? Through which process was that contract awarded? Okay. And from which source of funding? Whether it be through your loan or be through the consolidated fund, Ghanaians deserve to know. Okay. And that's why we are asking Shira to do Thank this for us. Thank you very much, Edward. Now, beyond the dynamic youth movement, we know that um, a lot of civil society organizations also spoke against it. This hashtag had gone viral, and it's the drop the chamber hashtag. And there was supposed to be a march that was going to take place this Saturday, actually. So some minority MPs also didn't agree with it. Some MPs in the majority, like uh, Patrick Brahma, Honorable Patrick Brahma, did not agree with it. Akwesi, is it enough that this has happened? One, is this any different from the cathedral conversation? And how do we get more Ghanaians to participate in policies in this country beyond the chamber? Because we know that when we started speaking up, They've, they've, they've agreed. At least Parliament has now said we're going to drop it momentarily. Should we engage government this way moving forward? Um, thank you very much and good morning to your viewers. I think that first of all, my position is very clear. The whole concept of this new parliamentary chamber, for me, is a misplaced priority. Mm. We have a lot of uh, areas in our country love life that we need to give it much more attention that are very urgent mm -hmm. yeah, and I know very well that when it comes to our hospitals <clears throat> and other areas what if it's a is a, a loan or some grant based on a condition that okay we have maybe the Indians said we have just 200 million around dollars laying around and we want to tie it strictly to build in Parliament a chamber? I, I, I beg to differ. I am not privy to such information, mm -hmm. so I can't I'm just that. making I, an it, assumption it be, that what if is, that is, may is, even is, be the case? It is possible. I fully assured myself with the submission of my, my friend here, having listened to him. The issue is very clear. The whole thing seemed to be shorted in secrecy. Mm -hmm. I, it just cropped up, and people are asking a lot of questions. because we, we, It seems to be a surprise to most guardians. Because in the first place, you ask yourself, 
how did it start? Usually, you and I know very well that projects of such nature, look at the, the amount of money involved. The amount is a big, huge. Mm -hmm. It will have been on the known for, for some time, maybe sure. from the state of the nation address or something like that. We, 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 I mean, nobody seems to be aware. And if mm -hmm. you look at the misreaction from parliament, even the parliamentarians themselves, most of them seem to be mm -hmm. uh, not in the known of most of the facts mm -hmm. out there. And, and if a whole parliament that is supposed to be the, the, the legislative, uh, what do you call it, arm of government, coming out with laws and stuff, are not, as my brother rightly pointed out, unable to follow due processes in arrival at getting to this project, then, then it's, it's, it's a problem. We need to have a look at it. I, I think that we have a situation at our hand that, as you rightly said, we need to be able to do more of this going forward into the future. It's about time we drag the feet of our, our people representatives in various areas fit to fire. Because this is a clear case, if you would have not spoken out like we did. In fact, I, I wrote to my Facebook wall that this is a misplaced priority. And then I, there's no way this thing should be allowed to fly. Because you have to say, the people that we copied from our democracy, our parliamentary system, the future of the American system, they are still using the old, you know, But, but we are a sovereign nation. Should we continue to <laughs> model after other countries? It's, exactly. The, the, the people who lend us, who give out money, are still using... If you talk about the UK, they have... You mean our former colonizers? Yes. Those should yes. be our ex yeah, people 60, setting examples for 64 us? to 60, 65 million population. Mm -hmm. And as we speak, they have about uh, 650 House of Common Representatives from various uh, uh, sessions mm -hmm. coming together. And they still have this same... Um, Kind of arrangement. They sit on a bench. Yeah, they call themselves communists. Mm -hmm. And then you and I know communists. The word communist is just you know just a common person. That's how they see. They sit you know touching each other. Mm -hmm. There's no space between them. If you, you can go online and Google when they sit, I mean it's, it's a normal bench they sit on. So why is it that we have other areas of our life mm -hmm. that are suffering? We don't have adequate what do you call it um, uh, uh, health, hospital health facilities. Health. Even you have the hospitals, even the equipment, basic beds and stuff like that. Every now and then, if you move around, you see that people are sleeping on the bare floor and stuff. It's not even in the hospitals. These are things that we have to critically look at. We shouldn't just be engaging out of. And somebody also see that they want to expand, they want to create more constituencies. But then there can be modifications. You can modify the, the structure. Well, they're, they're even saying that's not what the, the purpose of it was. I think the. Um the, the majority leader said that that wasn't even it. They were yeah, still sticking to exactly. it. Exactly. You can see that if you, if you look at the reasons that are being given out, for me, they are not watertight. Mm. Yes, okay. it, it doesn't sound well. <laughs> and then you see, I don't know why this whole thing was not communicated well from the beginning. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know whether they envisaged that there was going to be a public outcry for that matter. Sure. They needed to conceal it. You, you can have a feel of that. Because if you look at the reaction from the public, had it would have gone on. It would have been something else. It would have made the government very unpopular. That is a mm -hmm. fact. They are aware of it. And if you realize, even the ruling government communicators, most of them have an opinion that this is not ripe. Is not, this is, we don't need it now. Hmm. That is a fact. So moving forward, what lessons can the legislature learn from this experience? I, I think that, I don't know what the majority, majority leader did was to try and test the waters and test the system. That's what I think he did. But going forward, I think they must let some of these things come out right from the onset. Mm. And then let's see how the public react, even before going to the stand of having architectural design and paying for them. Mm -hmm. But then from the, the communicator that came out, it does not look like they are going to stop it. <laughs> it doesn't look, mm -hmm. it, they are just trying to react to the, 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 the So the you're public. not satisfied with the communication? Yes, yeah, okay, people want to, it to be suspended indefinitely. indefinitely. That's what people are looking at for. Obviously, we don't need it. It. If the ruling government, even members of the ruling government, communicated as saying that we don't need it, and they are even trying to be very hard on some of these MPs who are trying to champion this cause, you don't need it. We don't need it. I mean, people are suffering. Look at look at our rules. Look at our rules. Look at every aspect of our life. People having challenges. It is not easy. You and I know very well that things are not that easy. And so, why can't we channel these resources to other aspects of our life? Two hundred million dollars uh, can do a lot, yeah. a lot, rather than to have people who are being paid with taxpayers' money, and they are complaining about a place that they sit for uh, one or two or three, four hours. Meanwhile, they don't even make it all the time. 
Do you think mm. our parliamentarians might not really understand some of, well, at least the leadership in parliament, right? So it's not the entire uh, people in, in parliament, not all the MPs. The, the, the real world struggles that Ghanaians are experiencing. There's a video on social media that has gone viral of a certain bridge where people actually have to get out of their, the, of their yeah. car that yeah. they're in to walk on the bridge for the bridge to pass through because it's so weak. And, and the guy is narrating that this is, the, th this is what Ghanaians are experiencing. Yeah. You can't fix this bridge. Every day we have to get out of the car, walk and hope that the car won't fall down. And here you are asking for a $200 million chamber. Do, is, is there some sort of disassociation with reality? What, what's G going Jifa, on? Jifa, anybody who tells you that the MPs are not aware, the oblivious of the difficulties, the challenges Ghanaians are going to, that is, sorry, this is a big lie. Hmm. You see, they are the first port of call when it comes to people channeling their grievances or their difficulties. They have people who work for them. At least the leadership of, of parliament. They, they are aware. They have been parliamentary before. <laughs> all of them. Almost all of them. Mm -hmm. Yes, they have been parliamentary before. And they know it. And they know they are supposed to act in the public interest. And who are the public? We are the public for that matter. You can't, because you can't just sit back and, and say that you are not aware of what is going on. Meanwhile, you are supposed to champion the cause of these people. They should be aware. Mm -hmm. they, they listen. They watch video. They, they listen to radio. I know CDFM or CTV is one of them. They, they do. All these campaigns and discipline, they are aware of it. You can't live in a country and decide to be oblivious of the, the realities of your country life. It's not possible. They know. But the point is that it's a misplaced priority. It is a situation whereby they really don't feel, they don't have a direct feel of the situation. Because by virtue of where they seem to be, mm -hmm. they are using four-wheel drives. Okay, how many of them usually use saloon cars, even if you use it, maybe for doing some short errands and stuff like that. They are aware. They know, even if they don't know, every day we watch TV, we hear. There's reportage everywhere. They know what is going on here. People are suffering, they know it. We don't need it. Hmm. And anybody who sits here and defends this cause, B, M, P, P, and DC, I'm sorry, then you have lost it. Yeah. Okay, mm. thank you. Edward, wrap Yeah, Jifa, um, let me just retreat the fact that the issue of a chamber, we are not going to support it now or in the near future. The conversation that they should be having going forward is that we should reduce the number of parliamentarians. Why? Look, when you go to China, the biggest parliament in the whole world is the People's National Congress of China. Mm -hmm. And for a population of 1.3 billion people, they have 3,000 parliamentarians. Mm -hmm. If you do the mathematics, an MP in China represents an average of 450,000 people. Mm -hmm. We've heard that uh, it's, it's rumored that the funds for this project is coming from India. The population of India is 1.3 billion people as of 2017. And the parliament of India, known as the Lok Sabha, okay, they have a maximum of 150 MPs. Mm -hmm. 450. If you do the mathematics, an MP in India represents an average of 2.3 million Indians. Mm -hmm. Ghana, scanty 30 million. And we have 275 MPs. Come on! We should be looking at reducing the number of MPs because but, the primary job of a legislator is to pass laws. But it let's, is not let's the, look it, at the reality it is not the, the it, it is not the more number of people we have mm -hmm. contributing to, on the floor that will, that will bring out the quality. It is not in the numbers. Mm -hmm. Let's look at what others are doing. Other nations who are, who are, who are, who are wealthier than us, mm -hmm. they are cutting down costs and focusing on quality. Why should Ghana, why should we be living... Uh, uh, a champagne life on a Pamoy budget. You understand? Okay. So, Edward, not... <laughs> let, me, let me ask you this, because we also have to take a look at the context, right? So, in Ghana, some people, or most people, the way they relate to their MPs. Last week, when um, both the majority leader, Oseche Mesabonsu, and Haruna Idrisu, majority yes. were on Bernard Show, mm. they both talked about how they engage the people that they represent. They will mm. literally call them, MP, I need this. Yeah. MP. That's how they relate to them. So it's mm. not, that's, that's our context. People see their MPs as a mm -hmm. father figure. They are focusing on all the small things, pay school fees, my roof is off. If that's the case, shouldn't we figure out what works best within our context versus saying these people loan us money, this is the system they are mm. operating, so let's copy it and paste it here? All right. When did this whole monetization of electoral process start? From the beginning, it wasn't like that. Mm -hmm. They were those who introduced that culture of money. Who's they? 
the the the, the politicians okay. they in the process of seeking for votes or mandates mm -hmm. they 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 introduce the money that i'm going to give you this this is just a token take it when i come to power i'm going to do more for you mm -hmm. they actually introduce them. do you think us as citizens if mm -hmm. you are my mp and i have you know, micro things within my family I would rather want you to solve than build a community center. How do you respond to that? That's different from me coming to you for money. It's me as a person, when you came to me, I told you this is the issue I'm facing with my small family. Mm. That's what I need to be resolved. So you're constantly in Ghana. MPs, most of them go to their constituents every single weekend. It's, it's more of a micro outlook than a macro thing of we need community centers, we need policy, this, mm. that. People want you to solve their immediate problem. How do you do that if you decrease the number of MPs in parliament? I understand what you're saying, and it is 100% true, that a lot of people send their personal problems to MPs to solve. And I'm saying that that is just a microcosm of the whole issue. The issue started when politicians started monetizing our electoral processes. And when you commit your personal fans, okay, to get elected. Now, people expect that because they have voted for you, meaning you are not going to do more. And because you have also committed your personal expenses, you are going to recoup. So it is more or less like doing business with the office that you're actually going. And the funds that are meant to solve the people's problems, it is that same funds that are going to end up in private pockets. So it is we, the people, who must have a change of mind and attitude. That when somebody is seeking public office, the person is going there to represent us, the person is going to bring policies and programs that are going to benefit everybody. And that if politicians come that they, they want to entice you with money, it is, it is, it is, it is it's a recipe for disaster because that money is going to be got back and it's going to be got back in thousand folds. But see, the most important conversation for me is we need to respect our constitution. Article 1, clause 1 of the constitution is very clear that the sovereignty of Ghana resides in the people of Ghana, in whose name and for whose interest the powers of government are to be exercised in a way and manner that has been laid out in the constitution. And, it, and, 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 and we could just see it, that the people of Ghana spoke and this chamber is being dropped. The chamber, if it has been dropped, they should drop it well and let's hear the bank that the chamber has been brought because we are going to resist any attempt to bring the issue of a new chamber, whether it is now, whether it is in the near future or in the far future, we are going to resist it. They should drop it, drop it well, they should come clear and let's know that we are not going to revisit this conversation again. Even if we are going to revisit it, we are looking at how we are going to shrink the number of MPs so that we could focus more on quality okay. in Parliament. Thank you very much. We will go for a quick break. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Now, if you want to contribute to the conversation we are having, our Parliament finally dropped in its chamber. Let us know with the hashtag Breakfast Daily and the WhatsApp line is 0550585832. Up next, we're going to look at the energy sector. So the Chamber of Independent Power Producers and Bulk Consumers are saying that uh, PDS owes some independent power distributors, producers, sorry, some monies. PDS is saying we don't owe them the money. And now the energy minister has stepped in to figure out what's going on because we might experience doing so if that $700 million is not paid immediately. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> Travel the country in just 30 minutes on the U tour bus. I'm just coming from the home or from the palace of the new Yana. This is our story being told. Today we are reaching you from Agotima. Journey to explore. From the plains to the greens to the scenery to everything. There's so much we need to do, you know, to boost tourism around this area. Ooh, that guy was just getting up. Learn and indulge in the culture and lifestyle of the people. Utah shows on City TV every Saturday at 1 p.m.
Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. Thank you so much for being with us. I still have with me Edward Tuta, who's the convener of the Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana, and Akwesi Boateng Brahma, who's a private legal practitioner. I've received some messages from you, so I'll read them briefly and then we'll continue our conversation. So, um, AU from Farouk says, okay, I'll get to AU soon. Uh, there's a message here. Good morning. I am Sonny Nana Riafe from East Dobro. We the young are not ready to receive the new parliament, Don Pro, Don Bro, East Dobro, sorry. We, the young, are not ready to receive the new parliament. It is bringing, it brings nothing to, of, to us. If, in fact, I saw children walking in a flooded community going to school while we are using this money for this new parliament. So he's not happy about that. Wolanyo Nakwetia says, there are some people regarding themselves as first-class citizens. Better that they kick against that so-called needless chamber. The time has come our legislature to be thinking beyond their selfish and parochial interests and have the nation at heart. What do these our parliamentarians take us for? Until we have complete schools, good hospitals, and our youth are employed, we will kick against any move that will benefit the selfish interest of some selected few called politicians. From Dr. Abedi Inquada, so he says, Thank God Parliament has put on hold its decision to construct a 450-seater parliamentary chamber following intense pressure from Ghanaians. Now, A.U. Farouk from Tamale says, Good morning. The truth must be told. The government did not drop that chamber. It is Parliament that put on hold construction pending service board meeting. Kumia per condemo loading. Okay, so that's come from AU from Farouk. Of course, keep your comments coming with the hashtag Breakfast Daily. And the WhatsApp line is 0550585832. Now we'll move on to some recent power outages. Energy Minister directed to meet independent power producers. Now the Chamber of Independent Power Producers and Bulk Consumers has warned that power consumers could be faced with severe power outages, that's you and I, in the next few days if the power distribution services, that's PDS, fails to pay its huge debt to independent power producers. Now, in an interesting twist of events, PDS is saying we don't owe them any money. So what happened was ECG owed these independent power producers $400 million. When PDS took over, that amount has accumulated to $700 million. The independent power producers are saying now PDS has to take on this amount of money and pay us or we are going to shut down the electricity. So um, energy minister has stepped in and he's going to meet with the independent power producers to fix this issue. Akwesi, let me start with you. First of all, I think there were a lot of transitional issues that were not properly addressed before the PDS took over from ECG. Other than that, you wouldn't be having these challenges that we are facing. I am not privy to the agreement between them, mm -hmm. with what really transferred in agreement. But it looks as if that there's some kind of administrative lapses. I, you and I know very well that on any day when you inherit a company, you inherit it liability and asset mm -hmm. for that matter. This is, this is right. Everybody knows that. So I'm having a great challenge with respect to why we are having this difficulty. Let me, let me address this issue of uh, the, the, the indebtedness of PDS for stroke ECG. Mm -hmm. As it stands now, ECG is owing $400 million, and then the PDS owing $300 million. Mm -hmm. Before, on the basis of the PRC Act, under Session 3, PRC have been given a mandate to provide a guideline as to a chargeable tariffs on the provision of utility services. And then they are supposed to factor into contributing so many things. What I understand is technically they have something they call the annual return requirement. Mm -hmm. And each power producer is supposed to bring it on board. And then they, 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 they strike out the competition. And then in line with the, 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 the capacity that that particular power producer is producing. So they factor everything into consideration. So my difficulty is, mm -hmm. is either there are operational challenges on the part of the power producers, mm -hmm. and then on the part of we, the consumers too, the ECG or PDF, we are not really living up to expectation in terms of mm -hmm. ability to pay bills. 
So they, they are clearly, they are not penetrating the high level of, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, modern technology, the generation of power. Because if you are able to do that, obviously they are going to what? Generate power at a very lower cost, minimize the operational cost. Mm -hmm. But that's the case, we don't seem to be having that. Because you see, I, I, I find it very difficult to understand why, before they come up with a tariff, they factor all this into consideration. Somebody, every, each one is supposed to bring their ARR, that is the annual return requirement. Yeah. And then they put everything together. But we are still having these challenges. Well, let me read the uh, public notice from PDS, and they're saying this. PDS is not indebted to IPPs, that's the independent power producers. And they say here, PDS wishes to put on record that under the concession arrangement, PDS has signed a bulk supply agreement with ECG to purchase power from the latter. PDS has no contractual relationship with the independent power producers and has met its obligations under the bulk supply agreement. So they're saying they have no business with the independent power, uh, power producers. Yeah, but, Their but, business is yeah. with ECG. By necessary inference or deduction, uh, we realize that they don't have that kind of arrangement whereby they're supposed to pay directly to mm -hmm. the independent public. It's rather ECG yeah. on the basis of what you just read. Mm -hmm. That is what it, it means. Yeah. So what it means then, if that is the case, then that communication that came out was a Uranus. But ECG is no longer in charge. So who's going to take care of this $700 million? I, I don't know. <laughs> I, my, my, my friend, have you, do you have a chance of seeing the agreement? No, I haven't. That is, I think, which we need to be able to have an agreement and then we all read it and understand it better. We, mm -hmm. we don't seem to know exactly What's what going has on? Yes. You remember this uh, Kobo issue came out? Yeah. The same thing. The same yeah, thing. This one is blame games. Yeah, here it's not we, we are not in charge and stuff like that. We should have that agreement that was signed, that mm -hmm. concession agreement they are talking about, so that we know that each one's obligations under that agreement, what mm -hmm. each party is supposed to do. But yes, they can, because clearly they seem to also be talking from what they have, yeah. that they are not supposed to what, make any payment to uh, uh, the, the IPPDs, mm -hmm. you understand? Then, however, they are supposed to make payment to ECG. So for all you know, I think per the agreement, the ECG is still in existence to some extent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, they are still in, 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 the, in, the, in the picture. They have not been taken out completely, as some of us are being made to understand. So clearly, we need to be able to iron out these differences and see the way forward. Okay. That's what I'm saying. That's what we're standing. I still have a challenge. Because, you see, before they come out with the tariffs, they put into control so many things, the socioeconomic factors, the macroeconomic factors, the, uh, the uh, annual uh, return requirement sure. and all that stuff, the generating mm -hmm. capacity of each. And then they strike a balance. Mm -hmm. they, comp they, comp they did a computation, and then we're able to know what to pay. Mm -hmm. So is it that there's some more level of operational inefficiencies on mm -hmm. their part? Mm -hmm. And also we, mm -hmm. the public, the consumers, I know that they are not also paying. But then so far as I know, things have really been a bit good compared to previous time, where ministries and most government agencies and departments were not paying. Not paying. Uh, but now they are all paying. Hmm. These are some, they are all paying. So at least I expect that it should be, that le that to be lessened a bit. Hmm. But then to say, to say that after assuming office for four months, four months or so, four or five months or so, you have not even paid a personal, then, then clearly the ECG, mm -hmm. per what you just read to us, the ECG is supposed to be doing the payment. Yeah. They're supposed to pay to ECG. That's why they're saying that. This is a purely contractual matter. Mm -hmm. And we can be able to appreciate it more or better when we have a look at the contract. Okay. Now, uh, Edward, let me come to you. Just as Akwesi is saying here, yeah. just eight days ago, 1st July, we were told we were going to pay an extra 11.17% mm -hmm. on our electricity. Yeah. And most Ghanaians were saying, we don't mind as long as we have stable supply mm -hmm. of energy. Mm -hmm. Now we are, we're hearing from the independent producers, power producers, that we might cut it <laughs> mm. if these guys don't pay it. Shouldn't they have done their due diligence, be mm. it PDS, ECG, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. pay off the outstanding $400 million, mm -hmm. pay off the $300 million so mm. that we, the public, will not even have to hear from these independent power producers? All right. Thank you very much, Jifa. Uh, once you've mentioned the issue of due diligence, I'm going to tackle it from two perspectives. Due diligence has to do with how we generate revenue from our utility corporations. We've gone in for loans that we want to inject into the energy sector. Mm -hmm. The loans that we go in for are commercial loans. And when you go in for commercial loans, you need to present a payment plan as to how you are going to generate revenue.
to be able to pay back the loan. In fact, without a repayment plan, the loan can never be approved. So the question we ask is, we are talking about $700 million uh, uh, debt. So these monies that were injected into the sector, were there no revenue projections? Mm -hmm. what, was the, what was the repayment strategy? That if we are going to generate this amount of power, we are sending the power to these new consumers that are not on the grid. But if they should come on, on board, we are going to generate this amount from them. And that within a period of one year, two years, three years, we'll be able to generate some money. So if the debt keeps compounding but not reducing, it means there's an inefficiency somewhere. The loan that came, what did they do with the loan? If the revenue is not coming, then it means the job that the, that loan was supposed to do, it is not being, it, 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 it is not being done. So I... I, I I shudder to think what actually went on in the implementation of this whole strategy of injecting money into the energy sector so that we could get power. Or is it that they were able to generate the energy, but however, the people that are not enjoying that energy, they've not been put on the grid mm -hmm. so that we, don't, we, we can't actually trace the users of the power to be able to charge them to pay bills. I don't, I don't just get it. Because as the year should go on, we should rather have the debt reducing. Now, let me come to PDS. It is emphatic that ECG is still in existence. Hmm. Two months ago, ECG came out to say that they are not dead. And in fact, they are now going to focus on exporting power to our neighboring countries. So ECG is still in existence. As a country, why do we do this to ourselves? We have, we have, we have ECG. It had its own challenges. It had its own problems that had to be faced. Couldn't you draw a strategic plan? We've, then, we've just done a change of name and given our, our, our whole energy sector to a new entity. Now the new entity coming in, for me, I don't see anything that has changed. Mm -hmm. I don't see the practical change or benefit that uh, PBS is bringing that existed at the time of ECG that they are eradicating. The value is still the same. Now, let me come to the contractual issues. We need to know the terms of this particular contract. Mm. Because some issues have been raised. Number one, labor issues. The workers are saying that their interests have not been served. In that, in the agreement, it stated that after five years, PDS can, can, can take a decision to lay off some workers. That is on the side. Number two, our assets, the, the, the gadgets, the equipment that ECG has, it was supposed to be in the contract that ECG was going to supervise all our equipments, maintain them, so that in case ECG wants to pull out, we'll make sure that the value or the state of those equipments, as at the time they are leaving, are still in what? In good shape. That, uh, that, that clause, we hear that it, 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 it is no more. Mm -hmm. Now, for, for, for PDS to have the bravado to tell us that they are not those to pay those debt and that they have entered an arrangement with ECG, so ECG is still dealing with independent power producers. Then of what use is we are we, if, of what use is it giving our energy sector to PDS anyway? Because it's like ECG is still in the shadow. Mm -hmm. Look, going forward, this should be a wake up call on all of us. That as citizens, the nation belongs to us. Mm -hmm. Politicians will come and go, but we are those who are going to work, bear the full heat of their recklessness and irresponsibilities. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Now, the Information Minister Kojo Poninkoma was speaking on CBS and said that the government has asked the Energy Minister uh, Peter Amewu to immediately meet with managers of the private power producers. And I'm going to quote him briefly and then hear your thoughts on it, Akwesi. So the information minister says here, on Thursday night, this matter, which is the $700 million that in the independent power producers are saying they are owed, came to their attention while we were on cabinet retreats to see how far we've come in the first half of this year on the very many deliverables before government and the energy ministry was instructed to quickly re-engage with PDS and the sector players to understand the nature of the constraints and to quickly move to resolve the complaint. He further said that uh, the government is in process of renegotiating various power deals, some of which he said was resulting in the state paying $1 billion yearly 
for power even if it does not consume such power due to take or pay arrangement in such contracts. So he's saying that the ministry is going to renegotiate some of these contracts so that we can lower what we pay to the IPP. So of course, he seems like there are a lot of inefficiencies within the system and the energy minister is coming in now because independent power producers are saying PDS owes us, PDS is saying we don't owe you. The minister now has to come in and intervene. Already, we have some contracts that when we don't follow them, we still have to pay. I think I, I want to ask the question, for how long will the minister, for how long will he continue to intervene in some of these matters? When there the should have been a clear-cut terms of the contract. Mm -hmm. I don't know, Jiva, whether you have chance on a, a properly constructed contract before. You realize that they provide room for dispute resolution. Mm -hmm. And so I really, I'm, I'm at a loss here. I don't know what they are really operating on the basis of the agreement, PDS and ECG and then other matters. <laughs> because clearly, if there's a well-defined, well-constructed agreement, there must be a, a room for resolution of some of this matter. Mm -hmm. I don't know. So for how long will the minister continue to intervene each and then? The other day, he went to Krobo mm -hmm. yeah. And then today, too, he's been <laughs> invited to come on board. Um, let's also, let me move on to should respect to the agreement previous time. So when did they realize that they need to review some of this agreement? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been in power for, for almost close to about two, three years now. Mm -hmm. So so why must we be engaging in this kind of firefighting syndrome? So all this was, and I, I was really surprised and shocked when I heard him saying that the only time it was brought to the the, the cabinet attention when they want to retreat and stuff like that. That, 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 is, that is a bit you know, on the low side, seriously. I mean, on the low side. I mean, this, this, you know that the driving force of our economy is electricity generation. Okay. And, and this, this happening, somebody's being owned $700 million, and it came to the, the knowledge of the president and the, the cabinet a few days ago. I mean, this is ridiculous. Very ridiculous. So, so I think we should know the terms of the, the contract. Yeah. Very important. And then, I mean, so that we can avoid and save ourselves, the minister always getting involved in this matter. This is purely maybe a administrative matter. It's not a political matter. Mm -hmm. If you have really executed a contract, someone has taken over. Maybe the only difference is maybe the, the read the creation and then the inscription of the ECG offices <laughs> for now. Because you see, the, the, most of the issues that are still lingering are lingering. Mm -hmm. It's about time you spoke our mind. Though. I mean, because you see, some of these things we cannot try and then dance and run around it. For how long will you continue to do that? These are, these are very simple issues that the public must be made to know. Mm -hmm. We should know that we should have a, a copy of the agreement. It should be it's a public document. That's right. We should know it so that at least the public can appreciate the issue, the state of the issue. You don't just, you know, put everything in some sick and stuff like that, as and when, that kind of piecemeal solution to issues. The, the document should speak to it. We, we are a country governed by a constitution. The constitution is the supreme law of our land. So every life and, and aspect of our life Depends on the constitution. We all know it. So let that particular document that seems to guide this agreement, let it be known to us. So we appreciate it. Okay. Thank you very much. Now we'll take a look at our last story here. <sighs> Home Yet Pro Con demonstration is going to happen soon if it has not already started. And police is warning protesters against fermenting trouble. So they don't want us to ferment any trouble. And I'm reading from City Newsroom. So it says here, don't ferment trouble at Kumye Prekon demonstration. The police service has cautioned persons intending to take advantage of a demonstration by the Coalition for Social Justice to foment trouble to reconsider their decision. The police in a statement indicated that individuals planning to disrupt the exercise will not be able to do so as the police service had devised measures to ensure that the protest is successfully staged. So the group, they are protesting against luxury vehicle levy. They're also talking about how government is indifferent to our economic rules and um, they are, we have killer and registrative taxes affecting businesses. So they are venting out on a lot of issues that according to them, Ghanaians are struggling with. But the police is saying it will secure the routes earmarked for the event and take necessary steps to ensure the security of all demonstrators as well as maintaining law and order for the entire period and beyond. Infiltrators who may want to take advantage of the demonstration 
will are hereby cautioned to consider their decision since the police will not hesitate in dealing with acts that have the tendency to undermine general public peace and order. Edward. Edva, um, I think that it is within the right of any individual or group of persons who want to enjoy the freedoms as enshrined in our constitution, freedom to press, freedom of speech, freedom of association, that uh, they can come together and register their displeasure. However, the public order act, I think they've actually complied by it and the mm -hmm. police is coming on board. With regards to the issues, I think the issues are in the, are in the proper context. Hardship, uh, regulatory failures, uh, leading to loss of investment, high taxes. Them? Oh, sure. In principle, I agree with them. And those are issues that government will have to take a serious look at because the people's mandate can never be taken for granted. But are these issues that can be solved in just mm -hmm. a little under three years? Well, it, you know, what, what you tell us, okay, the barometer that you use to measure the then government, it is that same measure that we are going to apply to you. Mm -hmm. So in a nutshell, the demonstration should be peaceful. We've seen demonstrations where there have been millions of people, but it has been managed so well and that nobody came out hurt. I'll be, I'll be very disappointed if this demonstration turns to something else. But the police also will have to be very patient because... We've seen circumstances where the police have, have, have gone the extra mile to inflict pain on yeah. people. They should also know that these are protesters. These are their brothers or these are their sisters who are engaging in a political exercise. They should just exercise restraint with them. The demonstrators will also be very patient and abide by the rules and regulations that they agreed, especially with regards to the roots. You know, they should just make sure that the agreed or the approved roots, they should use that. And let's see how government is going to respond to the issues that these demonstrators are going to raise. Uh, I think uh, every individual or group of people have the right to exercise their, their civil right in the form of a demonstration. And now the law says that you don't need any permission whatsoever from the police. All that you need to do is notify the police. Mm -hmm. And then every democratic society you know, has developed one way or the other sometimes most often through you know, civil demonstrations so, I mean as, as they are staging today and you know that history will tell us this Kumipek demonstration started if uh, the, the sitting president he mm -hmm. initiated this and led it which led to unfortunate uh, demise of some some people yeah. and, and in history I think one of the way attended demonstrations ever organized in the country and so maybe in the same situation that <laughs> they was want to do this one, as whether you might have that maximum impact is another thing we have to look at. But then, I mean, as I said, I said earlier on, all demonstrations and stuff, that, for that matter, peaceful one, mm -hmm. you know, one way or the other, bring to the doorsteps of politicians and the leaders, the grievances and the difficulty people are facing. Um, whatever it is, it is liaised with a certain political, you know, undercurrent issues. And, you know, they are, they are likely other groups and the NDC, the opposition party, who are who behind it. And fact, really? That, oh, obviously. I mean, <laughs> obviously, he, 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 they are behind it, but indirectly, and that's how it is. I mm. mean, if Nanado State could have a demonstration, he's now the president. And today, that will tell you that uh, everything is possible with politicians. So, so, so now, I think it's going forward is not bad, but then, as the police has instructed, they should do it in a very peaceful manner. Ghana is a peace loving country. We don't want any victim of any circumstance. Whereby at the end of the day we, we, we will have a very unfortunate incidents. I mean, we, we are praying that everything will be, I mean, be smooth and successful, so that whatever it is, if the government needs to address, if they have to set up and they need to do that, they have to do, then they have to do it. So um, I wish them well, and then no casualties That's because nice. the police are ready for them. Uh, that one they should be. They, they've come out to, to issue a statement to that effect. Mm -hmm. And maybe on the basis of what happened with the, 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 the original Kumi Preko. <laughs> the original. original. <laughs> so, so which one is this, Kumi Preko 2.2? <laughs> uh, Edward, we've yeah. talked about a lot of things. We started out with a new parliamentary complex. We've yes. gone into the power outages that mm -hmm. people have experienced. And Kumi Preko, your yes. closing remarks on all the issues. Yes, um, you know, for me, my concern has to do with the overall effect of the demonstration. When demonstrations happen, it means the people are not happy, yeah. irrespective of the turnout. But do the issues resonate with the larger population? Do the issues really point to your credibility and have some connection with your promises? Does the issues that the people are raising 
does it pinpoint to the fact that there should be something that you should be doing that you are not doing? Mm -hmm. I think that should be the proper issue that government should sit down, analyze, reflect upon. Because democracy has to do with the people. If the people are not happy, they are going to speak through the ballot. And if, 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 if you want to maintain power, you have to address the germane concerns of the people. Failure to do that, you are going to pay the heavy price for it. Thank you very much, Edward. Oh, Akwe, any yeah. last remarks for us? Uh, as I said, you know, we have built our, this, our society, democratic society, through demonstrations. And the lives of, if you remember, there's a chief called Ni uh, Kwabna Boni. <laughs> I mean, 1948, he, he asked for the boycott of uh, British, uh, uh, the European goods on the basis of a high, they were highly I mean, inflated goods. And then, I mean, that necessitated our, our, our independence. Mm. And even recently at Ashaman, they still yeah. demonstrated the next day, the contractors are on site. Right. So if they have genuine concerns, why not? They can do it. Okay, thank you very much. Edward Tutor is the convener of the Dynamic Youth Movement of Ghana. And Akwesi Bwateng Bwama is a private legal practitioner. Now, read some of your messages and then. Mm -hmm. We'll go for a quick break. So I will start here. There's a, a viewer that says ECG owes $400 million for the several years of their existence. And PDS owes $300 million for their short period of their existence. Ghana is suffering. That's coming from Sela in Sogakope. So I think P ECG might have been paying, but this is just, you know, a bit that it didn't pay. I, I, I think that the amount is kind of accurate. Hello, good morning. It is the MPs who have cause the problem for themselves. They go about sharing money instead of investing that same money into profitable things. So I think this is in relation to me saying uh, constituents are always going to MPs for micro things, which um, Edward provided some clarity on. <laughs> so up next, we're going to talk about STIs uh, with mm. Dr. Kelvin. So um, <laughs> David, we're talking to Dr. Kelvin about some STI issues, and I hope we're all going out there and getting tested and staying safe. Don't go anywhere. Breakfast Daily. We'll be right back. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Thank you. We'll be right back. <laughs>